Assam, the sentinel of Northeast India, is a highly fascinating state replete with great biodiversity and wealth of natural resources. It stands at an altitude of 134 meters above sea level in the easternmost point and only 35 meters in the western part of the state. Geographically, it is situated in between 24 degree to 28 degree north latitude and 90 degree to 97 degree east longitude. The existence of a rich variety of rare insects and creatures along with world famous one-horned rhino, gibbon, wild horse and the rest of the jungles and sanctuaries of Assam exerts a great contribution to the elevation of human civilization. The living organisms, both aquatic and terrestrial, coupled with the trees and creepers of various kinds and qualities, are not lagging far behind in the race. Among all these, a peculiar kind of silkworm, Muga, sensitive by nature, is a rare and valuable living species that makes immense impact on the economy of the state paving the way for the Muga industry. The scientific name of Muga is Anteria assamensis helper. Like other Lepidoptera, it is a holometabolous insect that passes through four stages, egg, larva, cocoon or pupa, and moth. Muga is such a kind of insect that produces the golden color trait highly distinctive and valuable. The Brahmaputra Valley of Assam is the only place in the world where Muga rearers have been rearing Muga silkworm traditionally since time immemorial. In other states of Northeast India, except Tripura, it is found in wild form and people rear it after collecting from the jungles. Nowadays, people of the bordering areas of Meghalaya, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh, and Coast Bihar district of West Bengal rear Muga silkworm, considering its economic importance. A large quantity of Muga trade, as estimated 98% of the total production of the country, is produced in Assam only. However, the same traditional practice for collection of seed cocoons from the foothills of Khasi, Garu, and Nagaland is still followed by the Muga rearers. Muga bears its rich heritage from the prehistorical time in Assam. Elution is found in the Mahabharata that King Bhagadatta of Kamrupa fought vigorously against the Pandava wearing a turban of Muga cloth on his head. Even the Rig Veda asks us to remember the costume and garments produced out of golden trade. Again, that piece of cloth that King Bhaskar Brahman of Kamrupa sent to Harshabhadjana to messenger Hangshabega as a token of friendship was made of Muga silk. Further, in the Arthasastra of Kautilla, we have an important comment that the golden Muga cloth is the best of all. Rai Bahadur Kanaklal Barua mentioned that the Muga of Assam enjoyed warm reception internationally even much earlier than Kautilla's recognition. The Ahom kings patronized this Muga industry and it reached a high distinction. Gradually, Muga industry got transformed into agro-based industry and received a majestic status and thereafter emerged into a new horizon. It is a matter of great pride that the Muga industry in Assam has reached a leading position and become self-reliant in production of cloth. Muga is an agro-based cottage industry of Assam. Since it is an arboreal being, the rearers traditionally put them in trees like Som, scientifically known as Persia bambishina and swallow Litsia monopetala. 
some rearers even collect seed cocoons from different districts of Upper Assam, namely Dibrugar, Tinsukia, Lakhimpur, Sivasagar, and Zurhat, and put them in a sokori para made out of bamboo splits or cane. It takes 18 days during summer and 30 days during winter when the moths come out of cocoons, strengthen their wings in open air, and then get ready for coupling with the opposite sex. The paired couple is tied together in a korika made out of thatch grass, scientifically known as Imperata cylindrica. In traditional practice, male moths are separated after a period of 10 to 15 hours. Subsequently, the female moths start laying eggs on the corrigas. Sometimes smoke is used to enhance egg laying. A female moth lays 150 to 170 eggs during one course of three days. The eggs are placed in a chart for three days for the young larva to come out. The young ones, within a period of 8 to 12 days, break the crust of the eggs and come out eating them up. Then the corikas are tied and stuck in the trunk of some or swallow trees and the bottom of the trunk is tightly covered with banana seed to hinder the larvae from creeping down. The younger larvae creep up to the top of the tree and start eating the tender leaves first. The growth and maturity of larvae depend mainly upon the climate. The larvae go on eating leaves for a period of 22 to 50 days and then become mature to weave their cocoons. The rearers collect and put them in sandile or salani a triangular bamboo made rearing appliance and again place them in another tree full of leaves. During larval period, the silkworms slough off their skin for four times to hasten their growth. While sloughing off their skin, the larvae turn to be very tender, sensitive and remain static. This state is called the state of fever. Birds of various kinds, monkeys, snakes, baits, etc. are the arch enemies of larvae and so the rearers keep on eagle eyes every minute and drive them away with bows, beating drums and blowing some traditional trumpets. When the larvae become macho, they are called poka. Then they stop eating and creep down from the tree, evacuating last excreta and liquid substance from the body. All the macio worms are collected at dusk in a khora or bamboo basket and put them in jali made out of partially dried leaves and twigs to spin their cocoons. After completion of releasing traits, the worms undergo metamorphosis and turn into pupae. The cocoons are harvested from jalis after a period of 7 days during summer and 12 days during winter. Then the cocoons are selected and preserved either for reeling or for seed. The cocoons selected for reeling are dried up under bright sunshine or smoke to kill the pupae inside. On the other hand, the cocoons binned for seed for the next brood are preserved thinly and comfortably in Sokori Para so that the pupae remain unharmed. The pupae again slough off twice inside the cocoons turn into chokori or moth and emerge out of the cocoons after a period of 18 to 30 days depending on climate. 
The Meshu larvae make their cocoons by weaving the yarns with the help of a gum-like substance called sericin. The cocoons are boiled in alkaline or soda water for about 15 to 20 minutes to wash away the sericin. The boiling time may differ depending upon the nature and quality of cocoons. While boiling the cocoons, the reelers mix some sorts of herbal ingredients of hibiscus rosa sinensis, popularly called java full, to make it brighter and shiny. Traditionally, a kind of tool called bhangori is used for reeling. After boiling up in alkaline soda water, the cocoons are soaked in pure cold water. Five to six yarns are twisted into one and tied up with the bhangori. Subsequently, driving the bhangori, a golden thread is reeled out by twisting and handling the yarn in a peculiar way. An estimated 500 cocoons can be reeled by two reelers a day to produce 90 to 100 gram thread with this conventional method. A few days ago, a pedal operated reeling machine was invented by regional Muga research station Boku. This machine enables one person to reel out 129 gram thread per day. Another such reeling machine operated by electric motor was brought about by Central Silk Technology Research Institute, Bangalore, which enables a person to reel 150 to 200 gram thread per day by pulling out four threads at a time. The cocoons can be reeled out by pedaling this machine even on interruption of power supply. This machine gives the thread a regular twist to make a uniform yarn. This particular machine can be bought from the Central Silk Board at 80% discount price and practical training for its operation is also being arranged by the Central Silk Board from time to time through their research institutes. Nothing remains unused in reeling of Muga cocoons. It allows no wastage. Even from the rotten and decaying mass of cocoons, quality trade can be drawn out. These coarse remnants are called jutori. The dexterous reelers sometimes use takuri or takli to remove spurn yarn. This particular machine can be bought from the Central Silk Board at 80% discount price and practical training for its operation is also being arranged by the Central Silk Board. The weavers in Assam give fan to their artistic skill and sentiment for weaving excellent sketches of various designs on the dresses of Moga. Some weavers use flying shuttle to produce more and more fabrics for business purpose. But still now, the weavers in rural areas use the same traditional handlooms. Both reeling and weaving are done in Assam by people of all classes, irrespective of sex and age, race and religion. As estimated, two lakh weavers are directly involved in about 150,000 looms in Assam who have been contributing excellently in accelerating and strengthening the economic foundation of the state by producing heaps of Muga cloth every now and then. The craftsmen being guided with a ready-made chaneki, a traditional book having collection of pictures and flowers of various designs, prepares another chaneki by cutting small holes in a hick paper in a particular manner. Thus the weavers of Assam concretize their aesthetic dreams in their looms weaving various designs in their cloths. After all, it is such an agro-based cottage industry that enables the rural folk to gain a lot out of a small investment. 
Hence, it is worth mentioning that the Muga industry even strengthens the economic foundation of the whole country by paving the ground for about 3 lakh families to get self-employment. But it's a matter of regret that the prospect of power looms in Muga weaving is still a dream and it stands as a hindrance to industrialization and foreign export of the nation. The Assamese people regard the dresses of Muga as holy and majestic ones. They use in most of the rituals and festivals and other auspicious occasions. It is an exceptional and matchless gift of nature to the people of Assam. The dresses and fabrics woven out of Muga trade are wholesome, long-lasting, beneficial, attractive, scintillating and qualitative. The naturalist and specialist opine that this gift of nature, originally golden in color, will no doubt dominate and reign over the national and the international market. The Muga industry survives as an indigenous one. Assam alone produces 98% of the total production of Muga in the country. The rearers and reelers as a whole should undergo trainings arranged by the Central Silk Board to lead this industry in the right way. The government should also undertake effective schemes so as to inspire and support the people to establish new industries in all corners of the world. This act necessarily will play a pivotal role in preparing ground for employment in a wider scale. As has already been said earlier, the Muga industry in Assam is an agro-based cottage industry. The Soom tree plantation is a must for Muga rearing. One acre of land allows at best 450 Soom seedlings to be planted at a distance of 3 meters from each other for an ideal farm. In the west and the south of the Somali, that is, the plot of land planted with soom plants for rearing muga. Trees like wild chestnut, scientifically called Castanopsis indica, Nahor, Mesua fera, Azar, Leatherostomia speciosa should be planted to protect the larvae from storm. The seedlings take almost five to six years to be ready for rearing silkworm. At times, the tree should be pruned that it gives many side branches and leaves providing sufficient food for the larva. Sometimes the trunk itself is pruned at the height of 6 feet at an angle of 45 degree to the opposite side of the sun and a mixture of sticky mud and cow dung is plastered over the cut end. Moreover, emaciated twigs with insufficient leaves should also be cut down for the healthy growth of the tree. Leaf spot. The fungal disease causes red spot on the leaves and the leaves gradually wilt and fall down. The fungus Phyllostica persia can be destroyed by burning the diseased leaves. It can be prevented by a regular spray of 0.1% diethen M45 besides pruning. The leaf blight is another fungal disease spread by fungus Coletoticum gliosporidis and the spots usually appear near to the leaf edges or tips. As the disease progresses, the spots get collapsed, malformed and the infected areas become brown to black and dry up. Stem borer. It is the most common and serious pest of soam called Zozera indica. The caterpillar enters into the pit of the main trunk by making holes and eats up the tissues resulting gradual emaciation of the tree. 
the borer attack can be managed by plugging the holes with cotton balls shocked in 1.5% Nuvan followed by plastering with mud. Pebrin, it is a dreadful disease of Muga silkworm caused by protozoan species, Nosema enteria, and transmitted from mother moth to the offspring through eggs. It is detected through proper microscopic examination in Central Muga and Airy Research and Training Institute, Lahdegar, Zurhat. After completion of egg laying, the lower abdomen of the mother moth is cut and smeared in 0.8% potassium carbonate. The ground mass is then examined with the help of a phase contrast microscope and if any oval shaped body is noticed, the eggs of the particular moth are rejected. Fletchery By nature, Fletchery is the most destructive disease caused by a bacterium. Gressary Gressary is a viral disease commonly called jaundice which causes severe mortality of Muga silkworm. Muscardine, another disease that specially breaks out in winter crop during foggy weather. The causal organism is a fungus called Bovoria species, which kills Muga silkworm in a devastating way. The Central Muga Airy Research and Training Institute at La Degor 